Good morning, good morning, good morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers, now like I told you this morning, I'm just shooting straight through all of these. I'll get the first video that's supposed to be out for today done. And then after this, I'll have two more and then freedom. Right? Uh, before we get started, just on a personal note, I'm an anxiety-ridden freaking mess ball of stress and pure exhaustion. Any good vibes sent in my general direction because my numbers at work have made me a fucking anxiety-ridden mess would be highly appreciated. All right. See, doctor, because I had proper treatment, I know how to deal with my anxiety in healthy ways. No shock needed. Crazy, right? All right. In the description box, folks, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center does not want you to read. It is written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's quote-unquote behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much, they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. So you know the drill, folks. Please read that article and don't forget to share it on all your social media, all right? We also have linked there at No Classics public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding in case the JRC has the balls to see through with their threat. We got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shock campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, a link to Jennifer Masemba's behavioral sheet of shockable offenses, a clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity and talk on dark subjects. If your child is 18, I'm sorry, 16 and younger, parental supervision is very obviously advised. Trigger warning, we are about to once again descend into the lunatic raving, sorry, the mad ravings of a lunatic mind known as Dr. Matthew Israel. You're going to hear gaslighting. You're going to hear lies. You're going to hear outdated organizations, many in which who no longer exist, used as justification for this insanity. You are going to hear pseudoscience. You're going, I'm going to say lies again, because with him, that's like, he, if his lips are moving, right? This Dr. Matthew's lips are moving, he's lying. You're going to hear enough ableism and bigotry to circle the globe a few thousand times. So just, you know, be prepared for the stupid, all right? Now, as promised in the last video, we're going to go a little bit more in depth into the so-called organizations and studies that back him that are over 30 years old. And then I'm going to show you the list to the professional organizations recognized by our modern medical world to be the experts on this subject who have very loudly and resolutely come against these bastards and all those organizations who have since that time removed their support from the JRC. But first, let's get started. The first is the Association of Behavioral and Cognitive Therapies, 1982. This is coming from a time, folks, that's literally over 40 years old. I know this because my brother was born in 1982, and he became 40 not that long ago. The fact that he's using an over 40-year-old document to back him in 2010, if it speaks volumes to you, it really should. This is not even close to being someone 
who is a contemporary at the time he's writing this paper that he can cite as someone who supports his bullshit. But let's move forward. The Treatment of Self-Interest Behavior. This position paper by the leading association of behavioral therapists in the world supports the use of skin shock aversives to decelerate self-abusive behaviors. Over 40 years ago, doctor, over 40 years ago. Do you know how many options in the early 1980s there was to deal with self-injurious behavior? Coming as an expert on this particular subject, can I just say, no, there wasn't. We didn't know a whole lot about autism in the 80s. By the way, we're talking also from an era that had no idea that autistics like myself even fucking existed. Okay? Or Jennifer Masamba. Or Andre McCollins. The list fucking goes on. You cannot cite a paper over 40 fucking years old and use it as a means to support what you're doing in the modern world. Fucking spare me, doctor. Let's move on to the next one. International Association for Behavior Analysts. This is what became later ABAI, a group that has finally, after decades, have renounced any and all connections to the JRC. Gee, I wonder why. The Right to Effective Behavioral Treatment, 1988. Folks, this paper came out when I was four years old. It's over 30 years old. We're talking about the dawn when people were debating whether the ADD and ADHD needed to be included into the DSM for the first time. That's just how far back we're talking. And he's going to use it to support him in 2010. Right. The statement by leading association of behavioral psychologists in the world supports a parent's right to obtain effective behavioral treatment, including the rights to use adversives when necessary. Again, we're talking the 80s, folks. What did they know about autism back then? Not a whole fuck of a lot. Okay. We're talking about an era where most parents, when their kids got the diagnosis, were told to institutionalize their kids. Okay? That's how far back we're going here. You can't use a time, a paper from a time when literally nothing was fucking known about the diagnosis as a means to support your bullshit, doctor. Okay? Let's continue on, shall we? Let's talk about other ancient things. My God. Why don't you just cite, you know, the Pharaoh used to back in ancient Egypt? Because, yeah, th this is what we're dealing with here. Fuck me. The National Institute of Health 1989 Consensus Conference on Destructive Behaviors the report of the conference specifically recognized skin shock as a decelerative procedure that has support in the professional literature. In the 80s. Can I say that again? The 80s. And let's talk about the 1980s. That's when they did, before the GED, he was using the SIBI, which if you've actually studied this subject, worked on a far, far, far fucking lower voltage than what the current GEDs do. It may be found support because back then you weren't using a device that was nine times more powerful than an electrical fence. Okay? You cannot use them for supporting your modern bullshit when what you were doing in the 1980s was completely different from what the fuck you're doing now. Okay? Okay, Karen, shut the fuck up. Division 33 of the American Psychological Association. Again, 1989, folks. Position paper guidelines for effective behavioral treatment for persons with mental retardation and developmental disabilities. You're going to really cite that. You're going to fucking cite that in 2010. Literally the fucking era of person, people, first language. Really? Really? 
you are just at this point discrediting yourself, doctor. I'm just going to let you dig your grave. In this document, Division 33, the Division for Developmental Disability, supports the use of adversives when necessary in 1989. People, if you think this organization at this point in time with the leaps and bounds we have come in autism and other developmental disability treatments still support this, yeah, just going to say. Autism Society of America Options Policy. In the context of a debate over the use of adversives, the Autism Society of America, which is the largest advocacy organization for autistic persons in the country, adopted a policy that supports the right of parents to select an option for the treatment of their autistic child that is best suited to their own needs. Oh, now you're going to gaslight us advocates. I'm going to shine a little bit of fucking truth and reality on this for you folks. Autism Society of America is ran by parents, not us. And it takes a special level of balls to call yourself the Autism Society when you do not have the diagnosis. They've kind of gone the way of the dodo, folks, and I'm glad that they did. I am so tired of these organizations that sit there and say, we make decisions and speak for the autistic people. Sit the fuck down. Shut up. Sit down. You don't have the first fucking clue of what you're talking about. You do not live with this diagnosis. You have no right to speak for us whatsoever. We are completely capable of speaking for ourselves. There is a goddamn reason why we had to get together and create our own organization made up of nothing of our voices, folks. Because we got tired of being told to keep our mouth shut and let these organizations do whatever the hell they want with us without us being able to say a word. That's why ASAN exists. Because we are tired of being told to shut up. Okay? Please do not cite a parent organization to me. May I go ahead and remind you these are not doctors, psychologists, neurologists. They're parents. Many parents have drank the JRC Kool-Aid. Many parents will do whatever it takes to make the behavior stop without thinking about the consequences, the autonomy, the sense of self-work, or the psychological damage being done to the person who actually has the diagnosis. That's why we created ASAN, as a means of protection, as a way to get out our individual authentic voices out so that people can no longer pound their chests and say that they speak for us while literally supporting fucking genocide. I'm eyeballing you, Autism Speaks. Just saying. Uh, this is also one of the groups who backed the whole anti-vax movement. I'm pretty sure. Do not quote me on that. I'll look into it. But yeah. Just saying. So now, he's going to cite a bunch of bullshit. We'll get into that in the next video. But I promised y'all something. So let's find it, shall we? I'm going to move the computer. I do apologize in advance. You're going to have to stare at real close and personal with my ugly mug. Now let's do it, shall we? I do apologize for that. All right, now, what we're going to pull up next, you're going to see kind of a part of me here, is I'm going to pull up all the national organizations full of professionals, self-advocates, what have you, that have come against the JRC. You can already see it, right? First group is ADAPT. ADAPT, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the oldest and largest self-advocacy groups 
in the entirety of the nation. They have come out very loudly and have marched on Washington against the torture and abuse of the kids at the Judge Rotenberg Center. These individuals are the ones that you can thank for ramps on buses and ramps throughout the community for the wheelchair bound. These are individuals who would used to lie down in front of public buses in protest so that reasonable accommodations for people in wheelchairs could be met. They obvious, often engage in what they call civil disobedience as a means of protest against laws and all kinds of bullshit that comes against people with disabilities. So let's go here, shall we? We have neuroplastic, of course. So many others. Let's just, yeah. Take a look, see here. Let's find it, shall we? Here we are. Remember who the Ark is. They are the one of the largest and the oldest provider of services to people with developmental disabilities in the entirety of the nation, folks. The whole nation. This is from their official page. This has been loudly denounced. Do you see it? They've got a whole article. If you go back into my videos, you will find where we went over their complete and utter refusal to support this school. So there's the ARC. Okay. Let's take a look at a few others, shall we? That's the Daily Beast. The only time they were ever, like, useful in anything. Remember, the FDA's on our side. The UN has declared it torture. Oh, but the JRC knows better, right? And look, JRC tries to silence autistic organization. That's neuroclastic. Unsilenced.org supports us. I'm sure you're seeing this, right? We have places like the Commonwealth Magazine. If you want to talk, sit there and talk about it. Here we are. We're about to take a look, folks. Shall we? Shall we just? Okay. This is who they are. That's their org chart. CCHR supports UN and rights groups demand for the urgent FDA ban on skin electric shock devices. So human rights groups, folks, human rights groups. 
So what are we seeing here? Are we seeing any medical organizations coming out in defense of Dr. Matthew Israel like he would have you believe? No, we're not. We're seeing in actuality the complete utter opposite. Crazy, isn't it? ABAI has removed their support. So you're seeing this. The, oh, one of the biggest ones, by the way. The New York State Department for Special Education has come against them. The United Nations, the New York Post, unlike the fucking Times, Fall River School Committee, Even the Boston Globe. So you're seeing this, right? I'm making my point. You notice two glaring things there. First of all, when we are finding the organizations, and JRC has made it extremely difficult, I might add, you're seeing groups who are international and national. Groups who have been around far longer than the JRC are far older and have a much wider range of individuals in which they provide services on the daily. You are seeing human rights groups come out against it. You're seeing groups like ADEPT, famous for being able to get laws passed for reasonable accommodations while traveling on the bus and for up ramps and the ability for people with wheelchairs to be able to get access to their community. This doctor has organizations that have since gone the way of the dodo and studies that go back from over 40 years ago. I think that makes my point quite clear. And we're gonna go ahead and close out on that here. I will make sure you don't have to suffer my mug anymore. <laughs> there we go. All right, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this subject. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this morning. And as always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you can have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.